tonight we're going to talk about the word and the battle of Armageddon. Iri uyu mugoro batugiye kuganira ku ntambara ya Armageddon. And also about the seven last plagues. Maze tunaganire ku byago birindwi by'iminsi y'imperuka. Now many times people think that these seven last plagues are called the apocalypse, something that is very traumatic at the end. Abantu benshi bibwira ko ibyago birindwi nyine ari ibyago bizasoza isi cyangwa ibyago by'imperuka. And these plagues in the book of Revelation people are afraid of Nuko abantu basoma ibyahishuwe bakagira ubwoba bw'ibi byago. Oh, we're going to have terrible disasters. Bakavuga bati ibi bizaba ari injyana muntu. When you think about natural disasters it's not a very nice thing. Iyo utekereje kuri ibi biza ntabwo ari ikintu kishimisha. Earthquakes and fire. Ibishitsi imiriro. Volcanic eruptions. Kuruka kwibirunga. Will the world be involved in the war of Armageddon? BCC is as mirira. Changwe zinjira muri inambara ya Armageddon. Will we look at television and see all of these terrible conflicts and famine and terrible pestilence? Yo twica imbere ya televiziyo zacu tureba inambara hirya no hino imyivumba gatanyo n'imivurungano. Will there be a whole world or global financial collapse? Bese ubukungu bw'isi buzagira burya bunanirane maze ibintu bidogera icyarimwe. Or are we going to have another global international war? Cyangwa tuzongera kugira intambara y'isi. Now we read in the gospels. Ariko yo dusomye mu butumwa bwiza. And we see the love of Christ in his ministry. Tubona urukundo rwa Yesu mu murimo we. Now if we would expect that these things were coming. Niba twiteze kwibi bizaba. Don't you think that God would give us a sign that they're coming? Bese ni muzi ku Imana ishobora kuduha ikimenyetso cyerekanaho bigeze. Wouldn't God give us a message to warn us about the plague? Bese Imana ni ikwiriye kutuburira ngo itubwira aho ibi byago birindwi bigeze. Now we've read this before, chapter 14 of Revelation, verse 6. Twabanje gusoma ibyahishu igice cya 14 ku murongo waho wa gatandatu. I saw another angel in the midst of heaven. Mbona maraika undaguru karinga ni jijuru. Preach to every nation, tribe, tongue and people. Ngwabwirize amoko yose n'indi mizose. So this last day message flies all over the world. Ubu butumwa rero bwiteka ryose burakwirisi yose. And God in his love sends a message of salvation. Kandi Imana mu rukundo rwayo iratangaza inkuru yagakiza. He says, fear God and give glory to him. And worship him who made heaven and earth. Now, notice this last message. It leads men and women everywhere to worship who? Nubutumwa burari chira bagore na bagabobo sekuramyande. The Creator. Umuremi. The Creator has left us a symbol that He created the world. Umuremi yadusi gichi menyezo kitkui butsa kuari wewa turemi nini? We learned about that a few nights ago. It is the Bible Sabbath. Kuarabji ize kuasanza kuichi menyezo chirema ari sabato yomuri bibiria. The Sabbath is the seventh day of creation week. Isabato numusi wakarinui wichumwe ruchirema. You remember the fourth commandment. Six days, in six days, God created the earth, and in six days we are to work, and the seventh is the Sabbath. Now, Revelation 14, verse 7, talks about true worship. Verse 9, two verses later, talks about false worship. Let's look at it. 
Then a third angel followed them. Nukundi maraika akurichiraho. Saying with a loud voice. Avugishgui rirenga. Okay, this is not now something secret. Nobody, Nobody is supposed to know about it. No, this is with a loud voice. God wants everyone to know. If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead, or in his hand. Now, let's look at this. There are two worships. There is true worship. Worshiping the Creator. And then there is false worship. Worshiping the beast. Now, Revelation predicts a final battle over true and false worship. Verse 7 says, Worship the Creator. Verse 9 says, don't worship the beast. Now, the great conflict at the end of time, not a struggle or a fight in the Middle East, not a big war in Jerusalem. The greatest conflict in the end of time is going to be a battle in the human mind. A battle between Christ and Satan fought over you in your mind. Because it revolves around worship. So this is a test of loyalty. A conflict and battle between Christ and Satan for your loyalty, your, your allegiance, and your worship. Now it's similar to a crisis that Daniel's friends had in their day. Do you remember Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon? He's the one who had that dream the first night that we met on that Friday night with the the dream of the statue. Well, this king, Nebuchadnezzar, was so proud of himself that he created that statue all of gold and he was so self-centered that he ordered everybody to bow down and worship that statue. Daniel's friends were true to God. Daniel they had to choose between God and worshiping something false. And they boldly gave their loyalty to God. And they did not bow. And you remember the story. If you don't know it, you can look it up in the Bible. The king ordered them to put, put into a fiery furnace. And they did not burn up. In fact, the furnace was made many times hotter than normal. It was so hot when they took uh, the men, the men who took 
these three friends and threw them into the fire. Warumuriro wita nurugurumana kuburyo igiye bafataga aba bagabo ngo babajugunyemo. Those soldiers or men who threw them in they died. Abasirikari bajugunyemo aba bagabo baguyaho. But those three friends didn't die. Ariko aba basore batatu ntibigeze bapfa. They were just walking around in the, in the Ahubwo bagendaga batembera muri uwo muriro ugurumana. And Nebuchadnezzar looked in and he saw a fourth one. Nebuchadnezzar ahengereje abona mu wakane. And it was Jesus. Wo wakane yari Yesu Kristo. Jesus will be with you even if you have to go into a furnace. Yesu Kristo azajyana nawe nibiba ngombwa kunyura no mwitanura ry'umuriro. So don't be afraid of the future. Nuko rero ntukwiriye gutinya ahazaza. Because the same kind of tests will come. Kuko igipimo nkiki gishobora kongera kubaho. All right, let's look at the next chapter, chapter 15. Reka turebe mu gice cya 15 cy'ibyahishuwe. Verse 1. Umurongo wa mbere Then I saw another sign in heaven Mbona mwijuri kindi kimenyetso gikomeye Great and marvelous Gitangaza Seven angels they had seven last plagues Nicyo baba marayika barindwi bafite ibyago birindwi For in them the wrath of God is complete Nibyo byimperuka kuko muri byo arimo umujinya w'Imana wuzurira Now what's God's wrath Umujinya w'Imana ni iki God's wrath is not his anger at you or me. Ntabwo umujinya w'Imana ari uburakari ifitiye abanyabyaha mwe nanje his judgment upon sin. Nurubanza Imana icira icyaha. God loves us with an everlasting love. Imana idukunda urukundo rudashira. When people reject the warning message though, iyo abantu banze umuburo they begin to persecute God's people. Bagatangira kurenganya no kwicira ubozo abera b'Imana. Threatening them with death if they don't follow the popular movement. Bakabateza ubwoba bw'urupfu igihe babonye badakurikije inyigisho zabo. Then God's wrath or anger falls upon them. Nuko rero umujinya w'Imana cyangwa uburakari bwayo bugwira abo bantu. Wind and rain Imiaga, imvura, fire and storm. Umuriro, umuraba. The judgments of God will fall on this earth. Ite karjima na rizachirwa iyisi. Now what about the timing of all this? Arikose bizabarjari ni mutihejihe. What's the sequence of these events? Nuruhe rusobe rugiibi bihe bizabarjari. Well, let's read them. Rekatu bisome. First of all. Ichambere, there is a worldwide preaching of the gospel. Ubutumwa bwiza buzabwirizwa ahantu hose. Goes to the ends of the earth. Bugende bugere ku mpera y'isi. Gives everybody a chance to worship God correctly. Kugira ngo umuntu wese ahabwe amahirwe arebe ko yaramye Imana mu buryo gukuri. This meeting right here in Gisenyi is part of that. Aya materaniro ari kubera hano ku Gisenyi ni kimwe muri ubwo buryo bwo kubwiriza. Secondly, all humanity makes a final eternal choice. Icha kabiri inyoko muna wivi kajera umunuese yihitire mukwazamer. Thirdly, chagata tu the mark of the beast is enforced in a final conflict or battle over worship. Abantu bazahatirwa kwakira ikimenyetso kinyamaswa mu rugamba ruheruka ruzaba ruzingiye kuramya. All right, now let's see what number four is. God's loyal people lovingly obey him. Number five. The seven last plagues are poured out. Then number six. Jesus delivers his people. Yesu azatabara abantu be. So the gospel is preached and everyone makes a choice. Ubutumwa bubwirizwe abantu bose bahitemo and what brings about that choice? Nuko se uko guhitamo kurabajyana he. All right, let's look at the chapter 15 verse 8. Turebe igice cya 15 umurongo wa 8. No one was able to enter the temple. Ntihagira umuntu numwe ubasha kwinjiramo 
till the seven last plagues of the seven angels were complete. complete. So Jesus is in his final work in the heavenly temple. Yesu arakora umurimo uheruka mu buturo bwera bwo mwijuru mu rusengero rwo mwijuru. In that final work he makes a final decree or pronouncement. Nuko rero muri uyu murimo uheruka arategura iteka rya nyuma. We find that in the last chapter of the Bible. Ikigisho igice cy'anyuma cy'ibyahishuwe verse 11 of chapter 22. This is at the very end. Jesus says, he who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is Righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. Okay, let me ask you the question. How many classes of people will there be at the end of time? Two. Two, exactly. The righteous and the unrighteous. The holy and the un unholy. The pure and the impure. There's no middle ground. You can't, can't, can't kind of balance and say, well, I'm just going to stand in the middle. No, you're either on one side or you're on the other. Oh, yeah. So sometimes people say, well, you know, I'll come to church and I'll, I'll kind of be friendly there, but I also want to be part of the world. One foot in the church, one foot in the world. They're delaying making a choice. Ugerageza guhitamo. Everyone will have to make that choice. Buri wese azaba agomba kugira mahitamo. For there will be only two classes of people at the very end of time. Kuko hari amatsinda biri gusa y'abantu ku iherezo ry'ibihe. Now the final crisis that's coming. Intambara yerukisi ije it's going to lead men and women to make one of two decisions. Izerekeza abantu kuguhitamo kandi bagafata icyemezo kimwe. Either I am completely for Christ. Ukavuguti ndiye guriye Kristo uko nakabaye or I am completely against Christ. Cyangwa ukavuguti mpagurukiye kurwanya Kristo byiteka ryose. As you responded correctly. Uko mwabisubije neza. Only two classes at the end of time. Nukuri ku iherezo ry'ibihe n'amatsinda biri gusa. Well, the door of probation will close. And the seven last plagues are going to be poured out. Jesus will come to deliver his people. Okay, let's go to Revelation 16. And verse 1. Again, then I heard a loud voice. Nuko. I just want you to notice how many times we hear loud voice, trumpet, shout. God's message for the world, for you and for me, is something he wants us to hear. So this voice comes from the temple saying to the seven angels go and pour out the bowls of wrath or anger on the earth. Those bowls of wrath of God pour them out on the earth. Now, do God's people go through all of that difficulty? 
Are they delivered before this difficulty? Or do they live through it under the protecting hand of God? These plagues are called the seven last plagues. Were there any plagues before this? Yes, the Bible tells us in Egypt there were ten plagues. Now, I grew up in Cairo, Egypt. And I love Egypt. But when you look in Bible history, you will see that Egypt was persecuting God's people. And they would not let God's people go out of Egypt. So ten plagues were placed on Egypt. But the Bible indicates the Israelites were protected by God during the plague. And just as God protected the Israelites, he will protect his people at the end of time. God's people are present during these seven last plagues. But they are protected and delivered at the end of the place. In Daniel's time, the Hebrew worthies, those, those three friends of Daniel, they said, we will not bow down to that false image. We will not accept the beast power. They went into the flames. They said, we'd rather die than disobey our God. And as we said, God protected them. And the Israelites were protected in Egypt. Now, let's look at what the book of Revelation says about those who are redeemed. Now, there's a very nice picture of the three Hebrew men and Jesus right there in the middle. You know, on some night when you're scared or afraid, remember this picture. And say, thank you, Jesus, for sending your angels to protect us. Now let's see what the Bible says in Revelation 7. Verses 14 to 17. These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. Now what do these people come out of? It's the great difficulty or tribulation. It's a multitude so large that you can't number them. And they have faith in God. When everything was crumbling around them, nature was going in a bizarre way. They were being persecuted by God's enemies. They stood firm for Jesus. They came out of that difficulty and they stand at God's throne victorious. Notice the beautiful smiles on their faces. Without a doubt, they're looking at Jesus. 
Because Jesus Kuko Yesu preserved them through the difficulty. Yabarindiye mu makuba. Just as he did in the stories of the Bible. Nkuko yagiye bigenza mu bitekerezo byo muri Bibiliya. So the seven last plagues. Nuko rero ibyago birindwa by'imperuka. Now there's a much deeper message in these plagues. Bifite ubutumwa bwimbitse cyane. Than most people really imagine. Kandi nibyo abantu bakwiriye kwibaza. What are those seven last plagues? Ariko ibi byago birindwa by'imperuka ni bihe? Well, first of all, there are sores. Icyambere ni ibisebe. Sores from the head down to the toe. Ibisebe kuva ku mutwe ukagera ku mano. And the Bible describes it this way. Bibiliya doro kwibivuga. Revelation 16 verse 2. A foul and loathsome sore. That means just a, a, a horrible sore. Now those who enforce the mark of the beast. They say to people. Unless you take the mark of the beast, we're going to physically hurt you. They say if you want to be physically protected, then you must take the mark of the beast. So the first plague is a physical affliction Nuko rero icyago cyambere ni ikibabaza umubiri and it is sores from the head all the way down to the toe kandi ni ibisebe kuva ku mutwe ukageza ku bworo bw'ikirenge and what those who promote the mark of the beast promise abasezerana cyangwa abashyira mu bikorwa ikimenyetso kinyamaswa ibyo basezeranya abantu they cannot deliver so the first plague has a much deeper message than some have ever understood. Here's what that first plague is saying. There is no physical security outside of Christ. Church and state May unite. In fact, they will unite. Whenever that happens, pressure is applied to people who believe strictly in the Holy Bible. Again, I want to say tonight. I thank God for the religious liberty given to the people of Rwanda. Now, the authorities declare that they're going to physically hurt you unless you take the mark of the beast. But instead of God's people getting hurt, it's those who receive the mark of the beast who are going to be afflicted by these sores. Jesus is our only protector. Listen to this promise for his people. Psalm 46, 1 and 2. Psalm 46, 1 and 2. God, God is our refuge and strength. A very good refuge and strength. A very very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be moved. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Even if Mount Karasimbi is thrown into Lake Kivu. We're going to have trust and faith in God. Alright, now number two. The second plague. 
Inyanja ihinduka maraso. Now the Bible says that the second plague we read it here in chapter 16 verse 3. Chago cha kabiri tujisoma mu byahishu gice cha 16 mu murongo wa gatatu. Second angel poured out his bowl on the sea. Wa kabiri ajugunya urwabya rwe mu nyanja. And it became blood as of a dead man. Ihinduka amaraso nka intumbi. And every living creature in the sea died. Ikintu cyose cyo mu nyanja gifite ubugingo kirapfa. Now can you possibly imagine what would happen? If Lake Kivu tomorrow turned into a lake of blood, what would that do to those who fish? What would that do to those who use boats to cross or across the lake? What about the tourist industry of people coming to look at beautiful Lake Kivu? People aren't going to come and, oh, look at that. Weird looking lake. If it turned into blood, it would destroy part of the economy. But those who are enforcing the mark of the beast, they say we control whether you can buy or sell. They say economic security is in the power of the beast. So what does the second plague really say? Our only economic or financial security is in Jesus. Now let's look at the third plate. It also has a message about Christ. The rivers turn into blood. Revelation 16 verse 4. And the third angel pours out his bowl on the rivers and the springs of water. And they become blood. Now why does God do that? What do the rivers and water do? They become blood. What's What's water a symbol of in the Bible? Water is a symbol of life in the Bible. Amazi ni chimenyetso chuzima muri bibiria. Now let's look at verses five and six. Murongo agatano nu agatanda tu. And I heard the angel of the waters saying, "Numva maraika wa amazi avugati." You are righteous, O Lord. The one who is and who was and who is to be because you have judged these things. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. And you have given them blood to drink. For it is their just due or reward. So the enforcers of the mark of the beast say, if you want to preserve your life, take the mark of the beast in your hand or in your But they cannot deliver on their, uh, their actual promise. Because the rivers and the fountains of water turn into blood. And my dear brothers and sisters here in Gisenye, that proves to all of us that all of our life is in Jesus Christ. 
the end of time Christ is our only hope kwiherezo rya byose kirisito niwe byiringiro byacu for physical security umutekano w'umubiri economic security umutekano w'ubukungu and one who can preserve our lives ni ushobora kurinda ubuzima bwacu God's Bible promise is isezerano ry'Imana muri Bibiliya niri in Isaiah 33:16 Yesaya 33:13 murongo wa 16 bread will be given to him azahabwa ibyo kurya bimutunga his water will be sure na amazi yo kunywa ntazayabura so when the rivers and the fountains turn into blood nuko inzuzi n'imigezi nibihinduka maraso and starvation and thirst is everywhere amapfa n'inyota bigakwirisi God will sustain you with food and water Imani zarindira abantu bayo ni bazabura ibyo kurya cyangwa amazi Now the fourth one is scorching sun Icyago cyakane ni izuba ryotsa the sun is going to scorch things. Kuko izuba rizotsa. What's the Bible say? Bibiri ivuga iki? Verses 8 and 9. Murongo wa 8 ni wa 9. Fourth angel pours out the bowl. Nuko maraika wa 4 asukurwa byarwe on the sun and power was given to Muzuba ruhabwa kokesha abantu muriro. Oh, it was going to scorch people. Dari zuba ni zuba ridasanzwe bitigeze ribaho. When you get too much sun izuba ryinshi rikokeje ucika intege the bible says and men were scorched with great heat nuko abantu batwikwa nubushuhe burenze and in the process they blasphemed the name of god maze batuka izina ry'Imana ishobora byose who has power over these plagues ishobora byose kwibateza ibyabo and they did not repent and give him glory nibihana have no gushima imana oh my dear brothers and sisters bene data bashiki banje nkunda never take any credit to yourself ntukagira ubwo wiyemera never be self sufficient and proud we kujya wibwira ko hari icyo wishoboje always give god the glory iteka ryose cyo himana yawe icyubahiro the plagues reveal that they have trusted in the wrong place. Ibi byago bizereka abaranye nyamaswa yuko biringiye ibitari byo kwiringirwa. In the fourth plague the sun hurts them. Kuko mu cyago cyakane izuba ribotsa. Down through the centuries mu binyejana there has been a fight or conflict about sun worship. Haba intambara hagati yabaramyaga izuba in the final days there will be a fight over worshiping the creator nuko rero mu iherezo ry'ibihe intambara izongera ibe abantu bashaka gutoteza abaramye umuremyi on the seventh day sabbath kuko isabato y'umunsi wa karindwi a fight between that understanding is izaba ihanganye n'imyumvire and the other understanding of the sun's Yabaramya umunsi wizuba which is the first day umunsi wa mbere so the fourth plague nuko rero icyago cyakane says that all true worship is in Christ kiburira abantu ko kuramya nyakuri kose kuri muri Kristo worship the creator muramye yaremye it it does not want you to worship a counterfeit system ntabwo ukwiriye kuramya igihimbano the bible says in psalm 91 zaburi ya mirongo 91 verses 1 to 3 murongo wa mbere ni wa gatatu he who dwells in the secret place of the most high uba mu rwihisho rwisumba byose shall abide under the shadow of the almighty azahama mu gicucu kishobora byose I will say of the Lord Nza ndababwira uwiteka nti He is my refuge and my fortress Urubuhungiro bwanje ni gihome kinkingira My God in him Imana yanje niringira So God has a group of people at the end of time Imana ifite itsinda ry'abantu kwiherezo ry'ibihe They trust him for physical security Abantu bayizeye bakamenya ko ariyo bakesha umutekano w'umubiri They trust him for economic security Bizeye ko ariyo bakesha umutekano w'ubukungu They trust him for all of their worship 
biringiye ko ari yo bakwiriye kuramya yonyine kuko handitswe ngo uje wibuka umunsi w'isabato nabo bakabikora now the fifth plague is darkness icyago cyagatanu numwijima well, we have darkness every 24 hours it begins again or whatever e ntabwo tugire umwijima wa masaha 28 ariko turawugira buri gihe every 12 hours whatever it is but within a 24 hour period we have darkness e mu masaha 12 harugo tugira umwijima but this darkness is different ariko uyu mwijima wo ntusanzwe Revelation 16 verse 10. The fifth angel pours out his bowl. Maraika wa gatanu asukurwa byarwe. On the throne of the beast. Kunebe yubwami yayanyamaswa. And his kingdom became full of darkness. Ubwami bwayo bucura umwijima. And they nod their tongues because of the pain. It was they just oh it was horrible. Kuribwa bituma baheke nyindi mizabo. So light is a symbol of truth. Umucho ni kimenyetso cy'ukuri. They have looked to the beast for light and truth. Biringiye ku nyamaswa ari wo mucyo n'ukuri. But the beast kingdom is filled with darkness. Nyamara ubwami bw'inyamaswa bucuze umwijima n'icyura burindi. And this literal darkness on the seat of the beast is an appeal to you and me. Nuko rero uyu mwijima wo kuntebe y'ubwami y'inyamaswa ni umuhamagaro kuri je nawe. It tells us that all light is only in Christ. Ubutumwa burimo nuko Kristo ari we muco wacu. Psalm 119 verse 105. A familiar text to many of you. Umurongo your word is a lamp to my feet. Ijambo ryawe ni tabaza ry'ibirenge byanje. And a light to my path. Numucyo umurikira inzira zanje. Jesus says to us. Yesu aratubwira ati, I am the light of the world. Nije mucyo w'isi. John 8:12. Yohana umunani umurongo wa 12. So if you want physical security come to Christ. Niba ushaka umutekano w'umubiri sanga Yesu. If you want economic security come to Christ. Niba ushaka umutekano w'ubukungu jya muri Yesu. If you want your life preserved come to Christ. Urashaka ku buzima bwawe budahungabana bwegurire Yesu. If you want true worship come to Christ. Urashaka kuramya Imana byukuri sanga Yesu. If you want truth and not darkness Niba ushaka umucyo ukuri atari umwijima sanga Yesu So the literal plagues reveal a lot deeper spiritual insight Kiriya cyago gifite ubusobanuro bwimbitse kukirusha All right Revelation 16:11 Yashu gice cya 16 umurongo wa 11 They blaspheme the God of heaven Kandi kuribwa kwabo nibisebe byabo because of, because of their pains and their sores and did not repent of their deeds. Now you'd think that those rebelling against God when they would have all kinds of difficulty and sores and pain would fall down and repent. They'd ask for forgiveness. Ukagira ngo bazasaba imbabazi. Ariko siko bakora. The plagues show us. Iki cyago kitwereka ko it is extremely dangerous to turn from any teaching of God's word that you know. Biteya kaga kwiziba matwi no gutuma umutima wa utakira ijambo ry'Imana. Stay close to the word of God. Jubana ni jambo ry'Imana. Even if major religious organizations say things in opposition to the word, stand up for the word of God. Alright, now Armageddon. What is Armageddon? Well, first of all, let's look at the word. Reka tubanze turebe iri jambo. Okay, the word Armageddon. Ijambo Armageddon comes from the Hebrew root words Har and Megiddo. Rikomoka kumuzi wigiheurayo Har na Megiddo. 
with the meaning of mountain of slaughter. Bisobanura umusozi wo kuvushirizwa ha maraso. The mountain of killing. Umusozi wo kwikirwaho. In the book of Judges. Mu gitabo cy'abacamanza when God's people were surrounded and it looked as though there was no way out God miraculously delivered his people. So the battle of Armageddon is really not some huge battle on earth. It is and, and it, there could be some physical conflict that leads up to it. But it is the final conquest of Jesus and the armies of heaven over hell and wickedness. And it is earth's last war. But notice God's promise to preserve his people. Psalm 91, 5 to 8. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Nor of the arrow that flies by day. Nor of the pestilence or the, the terrible calamity that walks in darkness. Or of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Why not? Kuchi. A thousand may fall at your side. And ten thousand at your right side. Right but it will not come near you. In Christ we are secure. We are protected. We are safe. Jesus is our fortress. We can stand secure with Christ. So what does the Bible say about being delivered? Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. So the plagues are the reward of rebellion. They are not for God's people. Probation will have closed. They are for the people who are forcing God's people to try to follow the mark of the beast. The plagues are the reward of disobedience. Kuko ibi byago ari ibihembo byo kutumvira no kugomera imana. The plagues are the natural logical result of a life separated from God. Ibi byago ni ingaruka zo kwitandukanya n'Imana. Now notice what the Bible says. Ariko rebe icyo bibiri yivuga. Six plagues have been poured out. Ibyago bitandatu bimaze gusukwa. And then the Bible says after the six plagues. Nyamara bibiri ikavuga iti nyuma y'ibyago bitandatu Revelation 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So after the six plagues, Jesus says, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Now what sense would it make to say that Christ delivers his people before the difficulty, the time of difficulty? When the Bible says he's coming as a thief after the tribulation. It wouldn't make any sense at all for the Bible to say that. <laughs> so during those seven last plagues. 
God protects his people. Imani zarinda abantu bayo. And then number 7. Nuko ikarindwi the coming of Christ. Kugaruka kwa Yesu. During those last plagues he is their refuge and security. Kuko muri ibyo byago kwiherezo ryabyo niwe buhungiro niwe gihome gikingira abantu be. Jesus is their protector. Yesu niwe mutabazi wabo he is all things for them yesu ababereye byose and as the battle of armageddon takes place nkuko iyo ntambara ya hari magedoni izaba irimbanyije as this final conflict occurs igihe ntambara yeruka izaba igeze kumusozo the wicked try to overcome the righteous abagome bagiye kunesha abantu b'Imana the unrighteous unbelievers try to destroy the believers abakiranirwa bagiye gutsembaho abana b'Imana satan pours everything he can against god's people satani yagerageje ubugome bwe bwose ngo atsembe abantu b'Imana and at that time muri cyo gihe Jesus comes as the king of kings. Yesu azaza nk'umwami wabami. He is the mighty deliverer. Niwe mutabazi ukomeye. The seventh plague climaxes with the coming of Jesus Christ. Icyago cyakarindwi gihurirana no kuza kwa Yesu. Just as the ha- hallelujah choir sang this evening. Muko korari haleluya barimbye muri uyu mugoroba. Telling the disciples, the angels told the disciples as you see him go up. Cyagiye maraika yabwiraga abigishwa ati uko mumubonye agenda niko azagaruka. The Bible says. Bibiliya iravuga ngo In chapter 16 verses 17 and 18. Igice cya 16 tumurongo wa 17 ni wa 18. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air. Maraika wa 7 yasukurwa byarwe mu kirere. And a loud voice. Ijwi rirenga. You know, don't forget these loud voices. We kujya wibagirwa ijwi rirenga. It's something God wants you to know. Ni ijwi Imana ishaka kumenya. It's not going to be some secret coming. Ntabwo ari ijwi ryo mu rwihisho. Not some secret little thing in a corner. Ntabwo ari ijwi wihererana mu nguni. It's a loud voice. Ni ijwi rirenga. Comes out of the temple of heaven. Rivuye mu rusengero rwo mwijuru. From the throne of God. Rivuye ku ntebe y'Imana. And it says it is done. Birarangiye. Everything is finished. Birarangiye byose. Sorrow is over. Umubabaro urarangiye. Heartache is over. Imitima kubabara birarangiye. War is over. Urugamba rurashoje. Sickness and suffering are over. Uburwayi no kubabara birarangiye. No more tears. Nta marira no more disappointment na kongera guhemukirwa it's done birarangiye it's finished birarangiye rwose and then the bible says nuko bibiri ikavuga iti there were noises and thunderings and lightning habaho imirabyo namajwi no guhinda kwinkuba there was a great earthquake habaho nigishitsi kisi such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men on the earth igishitsi gikomeye gityo ntikigeze kubaho uhereho abantu babereye mu isi so this entire earth begins to shake isi itangira gutigita planet earth is being delivered from the bondage of sin kuko mu bumbe w'isi ukuwe mu maboko y'umubi this is the beginning of a new world ngiyi ntangiriro y'ubuzima bushya and the bible says kandi bibiri iravuga iti in that same chapter Muri cyo gice cya 16 verses 20 and 21. Ya cyo 16 mu rongo wa 20. Then every island fled away. Ibirwa byose birahunga. And the mountains were not found. Kandi misozi ntiyaboneka. And great hail from heaven fell upon men. Urubura rumanuka ku bantu. Rwisuka ku bantu. Now I imagine once in a while you get hail here. Do you get hail? Yes, sometimes it yeah. rains. Hari gihe urubura Rumanuka. Little tiny pieces of ice that fall out of the sky. Ukabona amabuye aturuka mwijuru mwabonye urubura. But this hail is different. Ari ku rubura rwo nti rusanzwe. The Bible says each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Urubura ngo rwapimaga italanto 63 ni ibiro byinshi cyane. So that's going to be in kilos what maybe about 30 kilos. I mean big. Ni runini. 
and it's going to fall. And here are God's people. And God's people are protected. The unrighteous are not protected. But God's people find their physical security in Christ. Their economic security in Christ. They have found true worship in Christ. Christ is the source of their light and truth. The wicked try to destroy them. But there is a great earthquake. And every mountain and island is moved out of its place. And Jesus comes down through the corridors of space. Hailstones come down and crush the wicked. Christ comes on his throne. The king of the kings. The Lord of lords. Christ comes as the master of all the universe. And the righteous, the ones who have believed in Jesus, are caught up into the sky to meet Jesus. And are changed in the twinkling of the eye. The righteous dead are raised to life. And the living righteous are caught up into the earth. The wicked are destroyed by the brightness of his coming. Those who are waiting for Jesus will not be afraid. They'll look up. Oh, their faces will be bright and happy. This is the God we have waited for. He will save us. And Jesus will look down. Well done, good and faithful servants of Gisenia. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Christ is our security. Christ died for you and me on the cross. The Christ who died for us is not going to let us go through the time of tribulation without protecting us. Christ that bought you with his blood is going to protect you during that time of trouble. The Bible says in Psalm 91 verse 4, He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His Truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Psalm 91 verse 10. No evil shall befall you. The Lord is your refuge. No evil shall befall you. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. You can trust in Jesus. Because Christ will be your protector. Kuko Kristu azakubera umutabazi.